Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me outside of the Star and Garter pub in Ardwick in Manchester. It can mean only one thing. It's the third and final edition of our Morris's Manchester Bimble. So let's stop messing about and let's indeed bimble. Morris's Manchester style. Join me in Anne Coates. Avid Smiths fans may recognise the name Anne Coates. She's credited with backing vocals on the Smiths single Big Mouth Strikes Again from the album The Queen Is Dead. It wasn't actually a real woman called Anne Coates. It was Morrissey's voice put through an effect called an even tied harmoniser. An expensive unit at the time, about £1,600. Bear in mind, a Ford Fiesta was £1,800. And an even tied harmoniser is only about that big. The clever name was taken from this area in Manchester. It's one of my favourite areas. It's where all the canals are. You've got the Ashton Canal, designed and built by Benjamin Outram. We've bimbled the length of that. And you've got the Rochdale Canal. That was originally surveyed by James Brindley. And then it was dug by John Rennie. And both of those canals are linked together with something called the Islington Arm. It's where all the posh wine bars are and the coffee houses. It's where you go and get your avocado smash. Quite different from how it would have been back in the day. Anne Coates was described as the first industrial suburb. It would have been full of squalor, factories, canals and railways. There's some evidence of that just down there. That's been more. Left too long in the passing time Conditions in the Victorian era for the working class of Manchester would have been uh, basic, shall we say. But that started to come to an end when they built this, Sanitary Street. It was one of the first working class streets in the UK to have running water going to every house and have private toilets for everyone. Prior to that, everyone would have shared one toilet at the end of the street. And it wouldn't have been a flushing one. Think Glastonbury on the Sunday night. In the 1980s they changed the name Sanitary Street to Anita Street, dropping the S and the TY from the end. That's because when you say sanitary these days, you think about feminine hygiene products, don't you? And nobody wants to live on Sanitary Towel Street. Let's bimble. Ignored what I read And look to the bright side so here's to the bad times, forgotten in good lives. I will, I will, I will let you down. I will, I will, I will let you down. I'll take off my shoes and dance to the good news. Broken smiles, but they will turn it round. Smiles, but they will turn it round. So take off your shoes and dance to the good news. Take off your shoes and dance to the good news.
if we're talking about the squalid conditions of Victoria and Manchester, we had to stop here at St Michael's flag stroke Angel Meadow. In 1780, Richard Arkwright built Manchester's first cotton mill just to the side of Angel Meadow. Richard Arkwright is said to have designed the spinning jenny water frame, which is a way of weaving cotton into fabric. But my bimbal is in Lee may disagree. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. They'd say that it was a Thomas Highs and that Richard Arkwright stole his idea and made his fortune. I suppose we'll never know. Around here was a little bit rough back in the Victorian era. The death rate between 1889 and 1891 would have been 51 out of a thousand people. To put that in perspective, for the rest of the country it was 19 out of a thousand people. So just over double. That could be due in small part to the sanitation of the time that Sanitary Street would have sorted out. But it was also because it was full of sweet and tender hooligans around here. A commenter at the time said this, got it wrote down in the big book of Bimble. The lowest, most filthy, most unhealthy, most wicked locality in Manchester is Angel Meadow. It lies off Oldham Road, is full of cellars and is inhabited by prostitutes, their bullies, thieves, cadgers, vagrants, tramps and is one of the very worst sights of filth and darkness. Strange ways here we come. That's been more. Strangeways was opened in 1868 and it inspired the Smiths to name their last album Strangeways Here We Come in reference to the prison. It was built to replace the New Bailey prison in Salford and it cost £170,000, that's about £16 million in today's money. The tower in the middle is actually a ventilation tower. It's often mistaken for being a lookout tower to see if any of the sweet and tender hooligans are trying to make their escape over the wall. All the different wings radiate out from the ventilation tower. There used to be an execution shed on B-Wing, but eventually that was replaced with a dedicated room with a permanent gallows. The last person to be hung here at Strange Ways was a Gwynno in Evans for the murder of John Allen West. On the 13th of August 1968, Gwynno in Evans and his accomplice Peter Allen set out to rob John Allen West but they ended up beating him up and stabbing him to death. Peter Allen was hung at Walton Prison in Liverpool, but Gwyn Owen Evans was hung here at Strangeways. Some of the notable residents that have stayed as inmates here at Strangeways go as follows, I've got them wrote down in my big book of Bimble. Manchester singer Ian Brown for Air Age in 1999. TV's David Dickinson for fraud before he hit the big time on the telly. Ian Brady for theft prior to the Moors murders. Dr Harold Shipman was held on remand here. Charles Bronson, Britain's most violent prisoner. And Mad Frankie Fraser, the East End gangster. Ronnie Cray, do you know my name? Well, he would have known Mad Frankie Fraser's name. Let's bimble. Moods can be lifted the brighter the day. Take the blue skies and now take the grey.
dripping from a seal black sky. Well, Bimblers, I wasn't supposed to be sat here to the rear of the National Football Museum. I was supposed to be sat on the steps of the Manchester Arena. But they've got a gig on. And they don't really like you hanging about, you know, taking pictures and making films. Which is understandable after what happened at that Ariana Grande concert. But all I was going to say is that I watched Morrissey there on the 24th of May 2004 back when it was the MEN Arena before it was the Phones For You Arena and the AO Arena that's how old I am it's the same gig that they filmed for that Morrissey DVD who put the M in Manchester I was there I was only going to show off Life was left alone In days that felt so long Being on our own was irresistible Thoughts kept to myself Shared with someone else Silently replied To most inaudible Between you and me Sometimes it was nice for a change Make believe this wasn't so strange I'm telling you my secrets again Imagine that you're still here with me Imagine just how good that could be I'm telling you Pretend, but I'm telling you my secrets again. stop on our Morris's Manchester tour the definitive photo of the Smiths the photo on every Smiths fans bedroom wall Salford Lads Club Salford Lads Club was opened in 1903 in an effort to keep naughty lads off the street to stop the shoplifters of the world uniting and taking over 
One famous member was Graham Nash from the Hollies and Crosby Steals Nash and Young when he was talking to David Crosby. Inside there's a gym and a boxing ring and some snooker rooms and apparently it's got all of its original features. It's grade two listed. And you'll be glad to know it's open to both girls and boys now. It's not just a lads club, it's a lads and ladettes. As if it couldn't be any more perfect, Salford Lads Club is actually on Coronation Street, the street that must have inspired the TV series. The perfect end to a perfect bimble. All thanks to Phil Gattenby's book, Morrissey's Manchester. Still available if you go on Amazon. There's a revised edition that's pretty much up to date as of 2009. But for me, it's time to head back. Back to the old house.